Hi, this is Mrs. Clark, and welcome to my video on function notation for Algebra 1. We're going to go over what function notation is, how we read it, how we use it. So first off, how do we read it? Function of input equals output. So this is the words that should be going on in your head when you see function notation. Now, if we take that sentence, function of input equals output, we can start replacing it with notation as we go step by step. Function parentheses input equals output. So I replace the word of with these parentheses. So of um, is what I would read out loud when I see parentheses. And the word function gets replaced with shorthand for function, which is just an F. The word input gets replaced with our shorthand for input, which is X and output is our shorthand for y, or y is our shorthand for output. So when I see this, f parentheses x parentheses equals y, I read it as f of x equals y. So our function's name is f, our input is x, and our output is y. Now, functions could have different letters. They might be g or h or w, and as you go on in algebra, this letter might change. So it wouldn't matter if it said w parentheses x, it would be w of x equals y. So if you're talking about two different functions at the same time, you need to give them different names. One could be h, one could be j, one could be k, one could be l. Um, we just give them different names or different letters to signify which one we're talking about. This output part right now you see as a y, but it's not always just going to be a variable. It might be just a plain number. But then again, it might also be something that represents um, an, exp an expression or something that represents whatever relationship the X and the Y, the input and the output have with each other. So if I jump down here to underneath the table, we'll see this function notation in action. F of X equals 4X minus 9. So this function here, written in function notation, this equation written in function notation tells us exactly how x and y are related to each other. When I put x in as an input, I do 4 times that number, minus 9, and that will give me my output. So we're going to do that down here. Use your function to find the following, then write your answers in the table above. So when I look at this f of 0, this 0, you'll notice, is now in the place where x was. So that means I'm going to replace all the x's with 0. My input is going to be 0. So this 0 here, let's make a note of that, says to replace our x with a 0. Okay, replace x with 0. And what I'm going to do on this side is I'm going to write exactly how they replace the x with 0 here. I'm going to write all this but replace my x with a 0. So 4, parentheses, replace the x with a 0, minus 9. So as I go and I evaluate this for f or for x is 0, I'm going to basically, this side is going to keep the notation. I'm just going to kind of bring it along. And on this side, I'm going to evaluate, or in this case, what that means is just to simplify using my order of operations. So to do my next step, I'm going to write f of 0 equals... And then using order of operations, I have to do this multiplication before subtraction. So 4 times 0 is 0 minus 9. When I go to do my next step, I'm going to bring my f of 0 down again. 0 minus 9 is negative 9. So f of 0 equals negative 9. Now that's going to tell me a pair of inputs and outputs that go together based on this function. I'm going to write them as an ordered pair. It doesn't say to do this in the directions, but we're going to write it so we can see one more way of recognizing inputs and outputs. So 0 was my x and negative 9 was my y. My input was 0, my output was negative 9. I can write it this way in an ordered pair. I can also take that information from that ordered pair, go up to my table and fill in when x is 0, y is equal to negative 9. So we're going to do that with three different values of x and we're going to fill them in the table as well. So if you feel like you understand how to do it, go ahead and pause the video now, try it for yourself, and then jump back in. 
All right, f of one, I'm gonna replace the x with a one, so four parentheses one minus nine. I'm gonna bring down my f of one to keep the notation. f of one equals four times one, which is four minus nine. f of one equals four minus nine, which is negative five. So to write my ordered pair, when x is one, y is negative five. I'm gonna go up to the table and fill that in. One, negative five. I'm gonna go a little quicker on this next one. Four parentheses two minus nine, f of two equals eight minus nine, f of two equals negative one. So my ordered pair is two comma negative one. When x is two, y is negative one. And last one, four parentheses three minus nine, f of three equals 12 minus nine, f of three equals three. So my ordered pair is three, three. I'm gonna fill that in. Okay, feel free to pause that, rewind it, watch it, rewatch it if you need to, to, fill, to catch that up. Okay, now down here we have a different question. This time it says, if f of x equals 27. So notice now they're not putting a number in for x, they're putting this number in for y. So they're telling us y is going to be equal to 27. So they're replacing the output. They're telling us the output is equal to 27. They want us to find the value of x, which means we don't know what x equals. We have to figure that out. So it's a little bit different. We're still going to use that same notation. We're still going to use our same function, f of x equals 4x minus 9, but now we're going to be doing the opposite. So since y is equal to 27, what I'm going to do is, um, actually, f of x is equal to 27. It's telling me my output is equal to 27. So I know that that means four times something minus nine was came out to equal 27. What I sometimes think about is if f of x is equal to 27, then this 27 can replace this notation in the function. So if I write that down, f of x equals four x minus nine, there's my original function, this 27 can replace this side because f of x is equal to 27. So when I do that, I get 27 equals 4x minus 9. In order to find the value of x, figure out what x equals, I need to use my inverse operations like we learned in our last unit to solve for x. So in order to do that, I have four times x minus nine. I gotta start with a minus nine and get rid of that. So I'm gonna do the inverse, which is to add nine to both sides. I'm gonna get 36 equals four x. These are going to cancel out. Four x means four times x. So I'm gonna do the inverse, which is to divide by four. I'm gonna do that on both sides. And I'm gonna get nine equals x. So what does that tell me? That tells me that when my input is nine, when my x is nine, my output is 27. So my ordered pair would be nine comma 27. I can also write that using the notation. I can say f of nine equals 27. So that's another way of writing the same information. The input of nine gave me the output of 27. This piece here is what we call a mathematical sentence. It's using a mathematical notation. I could write it out in words. I could say when the input of nine is put into the function f, I get an output of 27, or I could shorten it like mathematicians like to do and use these symbols and these, this notation to say the same thing that that long sentence could say. So here is a mathematical sentence. You'll be asked to use that. It'll be asked using that phrase in some of your practices to write a mathematical sentence. So I want you to have that written here as well. All right, go ahead and put that into your notebook. And we're going to do um, a color coded note page right after this. So all you'll need is whatever your color you're writing in, your pencil or your pen, and two additional colors. So 
you can feel free to grab highlighters, colored pencils, markers, whatever works, colored pens, crayons, anything you have that is two different colors than the color that you're writing in. And then you can watch that video and take your notes with me just to give a quick once over of function notation. Thanks for watching.